This is Fantology. You may have heard of us. All right, what is up, Wheel of Time, Dragon Sworn community? This is Steven, your host from Fantology, and I have my brother-in-law, Caden, with me today to talk about episode four of Wheel of Time. Caden, are we going to do okay without Jake? Because usually he's our expert, so uh, hopefully we don't go too far astray here. Yeah, a little worried, but I don't know, Jake has been more critical of the show than we have, so maybe this will be like uh-huh. a happier review without him. Yeah, but Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> We can just be shills to the show right now and not have to worry about Jake trying to be all technical with his criticisms on the pacing and CGI and all that stuff. Exactly. <laughs> because this was a pretty awesome episode. And I think from what I've seen that the reactions on Twitter thus far, most people say episode four is their favorite so far. Maybe it's some recency bias because they just saw it a few hours ago and they're like, that was awesome. So it must be my favorite, but uh, I, I think I agree. I think it was my favorite. I really liked it. I, yeah, the close tie. I think last time I said number one was my favorite of the first three, and it this is probably a little bit better than that, but definitely better than two and three for sure. Okay, okay. So the big battle in number one is still kind of that. That was still yeah. pretty cool for you. It sounds like. Yeah, that, and it was just very nostalgic. I felt like the. In the, yeah, they they're in Emmons Field and yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they don't have Emmons Field in the show. They just have two rivers. They, they're so, yeah. yeah. As far as like uh, the show appealing to people who haven't read the books before, I feel like this episode does the best of any of them so far though, with just the action that's there and then the cliffhangers and, and stuff that's happening. Like it, it opens up a lot uh-huh. and I feel like there's, uh-huh. yeah, the, the, they're definitely appealing to people who aren't fans or lifelong fans or at this point. So I really like that. And now that it's started off, it's kind of like settled into a more typical TV show way of doing things where there's like three different points of view and it just kind of switches between the three. It was mostly the Moraine, Lan, Nynaeve, Aes Sedai part for this, but you know, it would switch back between Matt and uh, Rand and Perrin and Egwene and that kind of helps break things up and, and make it seem, you know, not, maybe not as, is I don't want to say boring, but, you know, it just helps with the flow of everything because there was a lot of Aes Sedai warder info in this one. And I think having the three different plot lines helps make that a little more palatable to people because, you know, just sitting down and saying like, here's the Ajas and here's how warders work and et cetera, et cetera. Like that's kind of a lot. And it did do that for a good chunk of the episode. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, you could develop Matt and Rand's storyline alongside some of the other ones. Leave Perrin and Egwene to kind of just go on their own, not be too exciting, but you're still into it because you have these other storylines. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, yeah, yeah. picking up. And... Yeah. Perrin and Egwene needed to kind of hang out with the Tinkers for a little bit here. And I'm assuming episode five will be more exciting. And I guess we should say, like, this, uh, this, recap of the episode is going to include spoilers so if you're not too familiar with the books yeah we're gonna talk about what we think is gonna happen but i'm guessing episode five is going to be they're gonna get in with the white cloaks at that point yeah yep. it's gotta be right otherwise it just can it's, it's too boring they need something to happen yeah definitely yep <laughs> do you think they're gonna all get back together at the end of episode five i'm trying to figure out at what point that's gonna happen yeah, because I mean, I guess we're assuming by episode eight, they have to be at the eye of the world, right? Right. The, so there's, yeah, they need to be. Yeah, so. And they still have to do the Faldara stuff and the Waygate stuff. Yeah, so you got to think that's episode six and seven. So And the, and the Tarvalon episode. stuff. There's, I mean, it shows them in, in Tarvalon in the trailers. So that's got to happen. So there's, I, th- I feel like those are the eight episodes that mapped out. And what about, uh, is Egwene in the Sanchan? Is that part of book one too? Does that happen? In, no, no, no. no. No, no, no. I don't think any Sanchan are going to show up in book one. Okay. Couldn't remember what, what book that was. That's, that's, that's uh, book two. That's the end of book two. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. That's so okay. This, I was going to say I'm guessing book five, book five, they continue along the current, so, sorry, not book five, episode five, they continue along, they get back together at the end. Loyal comes in at some point, I'm guessing, 
I don't know, five or six for him. Episode six in Tarvalon, episode seven in Faldara, episode eight, Eye of the World, and that's that's a wrap for the season. Yeah. And then they that's also said though. Look forward to. At least I thought they were gonna bring in some of book two and three. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, like that's what Rafe parts? said, but I feel like it's really just minor parts, maybe like okay. some characters or like clearly we've seen here in episode four, they are straying. They're straying a lot from the book at this point, which is yep. fine. Like, I, I think it's a good idea, but we're just trying to, like, identify those moments. And I'm guessing when he says parts of books two and three, that's kind of what he's talking about. I, mean, I don't know. This will, this will see. Yeah. Because they've got a lot of ground to cover here. And they do. They've only, they haven't made it too far in four episodes. And, and we're saying in four more, they're going to be, they're going to have the whole eye of the world thing resolved. So they need to pick it up, and I think the way gate's going to help with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. You start to travel faster. Okay, so top moment of this episode has got to be the end, like the last 10-minute sequence, and then Nynaeve at the end was awesome, and I got chills, and clearly uh, Rafe and company has just decided they're going to make Nynaeve the best character because <laughs> she's been really awesome. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a really cool moment. I was trying to remember in the book how they how naive like how they realized she has like she could become an Aes Sedai. And I couldn't even yeah. remember being that big of a moment. It definitely wasn't I I, I want to say it wasn't that big of a moment. I honestly can't remember. And I looked it up and then I got distracted, so I forgot. But she goes to the White Tower and she's got the block, and I'm assuming you know that same thing will right. happen. I don't remember. It wasn't. It wasn't as big of a. Of, no, the yeah. showing was big of a thing. I did like the whole play up to that that part though, with Lan laying there dying, uh -huh. and you're like, "Hang on, I like this character, and he's such a key part. Yeah. Like, obviously, something's going to happen here. What, yeah. what what's it going to be, right?" And yeah, so that was it. Was well done, I thought. And I think even before that, like when they're fighting the dragon sworn, and you can tell like she really wants to do something, but she doesn't know what to do and it's all kind of overwhelming like i was thinking like oh, she's about to i was starting to get hints of like okay she's gonna channel here something's gonna happen yeah. and then but but then yeah you're right like when lan was basically dying that was really what did it for her and obviously we know that she can only channel at this point when she's super angry or feeling strong emotions and that was one and i think they've done a really good job of building up the land naive relationship and like the minutes previous to the battle where he interprets the old tongue that her parents told her and like none of this stuff is in the book but it's it, it was good and like the emotion on her face was really good she's a good actress she is i also felt like i read into it more too that it wasn't just her feelings just straight for lan but at this point i think she trusts that lan and moraine are going to help her find the other four um where she had that conversation with Leandra and she's like, you're sneaky and I don't like you. And so she's starting to realize like, hey, Moraine and Lan are good, which I, I like that being a part of it too, not just like this romantic relationship with her and Lan that pushed her over the edge, but that was like a significant yeah. part, I think as well, that built up to it. I don't know if she thinks, I don't know what her feelings are towards Moraine at this point. Yeah. 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 Well, and in, in the books, right, they definitely clash and yeah. she has so far with her. So and it's yeah. obviously, it, it's got to be complicated for her as well because she has these romantic feelings for Lan, but then Lan has the bond to Moraine. So how do you yep. get that? That's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Leandrin's good too. I like that they're making her kind of this like frenemy type person. And I think this is going to be, have some good payoff, I'm guessing in season two. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking that she was going to somehow like release the bond on Logan. She was talking about doing that. I thought that's how he might escape. Or like, I think it would have been cool if somehow they made it ambiguous. Like, did she do it or did the ward set it off? Or like, what actually happened there? So you might like suspect her a little bit more of, of doing something nefarious. They didn't do that, but I think that would have been nice. <laughs> And even if they had, I think it would have been so subtle too, because they just would have, you know, played it off as like the Reds are overzealous and she wanted to steal him. So she made it happen for that, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I was 
that's what I thought they were gonna gonna play it off as there. Not I yeah, I was a little surprised when the game broke out, but I think it's kind of cool to see his power too, that he was that that strong. Cause I don't think in the mm. books that's ever really highlighted like that. I mean, it's definitely always the thing that it's hard to shield. It's hard to maintain a shield. And Loghain was supposed to be strong. I don't necessarily know like the exact power rating for Loghain, but uh, yeah, obviously a formidable guy. I think, so at this point, I knew that that was going to happen in some extent because of seeing the trailers. Honestly, right. maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't have watched the trailer, but there's no way I could have resisted. But there were some things that you kind of know are going to happen in certain ways. Like you knew Loghain was going to escape the whole time because in the trailer, it shows him doing you know do, doing channeling in that exact location so something was obviously going to happen and it was building towards that and but it was still a really good payoff but yeah yeah i also really like the scene uh where moraine confronts him and kind of just talks yeah. to him for a sec yeah moraine, got- that whole scene so when he breaks out and he's like shaking his neck around and like all yeah yeah really he's yeah. got a lot of swag as he as he busts out and Moraine comes and talks to him and he doesn't even respond and just like stares at her with this sneer and yeah it was, it was cool yeah yeah but, but I also like that they don't set him up to be like evil he's not necessarily like I'm gonna take the power and conquer the world he's like he thinks he's the dragon because he, he's been he's going crazy because of the the corruption uh, not the taint the corruption apparently they don't yeah. from that but uh he's not like he, he's not the dark one he's not evil in that way he's just misguided i did like how they showed the the taint or yeah corruption in the weaves around oh. him uh, i wondered how they were gonna like do that but i thought they did a good job of visualizing that in the in the show yeah yeah one thing so how did he he shouldn't be able to see female channeling, right? And they right. say that. They, the, they talk about women not being able to see men channeling. So why would he see what Nynaeve did and be like, be impressed by it? Because he like steps back and he's like, oh, it's like, you know, the brightness of the sun or whatever the line was. And yeah. He's impressed by, but really all he should have seen is like the wounds being healed and Nynaeve's braid being flipped around, right? So, yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> the only thing that I could think, right, is he just saw all these people get healed. Yeah. Uh, all in one go. And, like, I mean, we've seen Moraine already this season struggle to heal people, like, one at a time. So, you know, mm-hmm. that'd be my one argument there that maybe that's what it was, but maybe just a nice yeah. plot line because yeah. it did it was really cool to say <laughs> it's cool for us to see on screen but yeah yeah he should, been, he should not have been able to see that yeah yep yep for sure and I, I don't know if i buy that this like it was really it was a really cool character moment for naive but i don't necessarily buy into the thing that like this was something that no other i said i would have been able to do or it was super powerful or anything because we saw moraine do a ton of really cool stuff at winter night and we've seen that i said i do stuff so is there any reason why we think that this is really unprecedented or really like super powerful? I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if the visuals were quite that strong. Yeah. That, and the, as a viewer, and I didn't really, I don't know, besides that line, like, yeah, I would have thought any of the ice that I could do it. Right. Um, and just as cool. Cause I need, you didn't realize she had that, that ability. Right. But cool character moment. But maybe he should have like been glowing brighter. The entire screen should have gone white or something for a second to really like show the ground that. shakes and yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. Questioning that one a little bit, but I think it's doing a good job of setting up. So, so now it's like, oh, naive. Maybe she could be the dragon, even though we basically already eliminated her because she's too old. But they're still kind of like trying to throw this around like who could it be and they did it they did the same thing with tom like basically telling rand like hey i think matt can channel and we got to protect him so yeah well a good job of showing that like did you, we're not sure who the dragon is 
I uh, I rewatched episode one, and in that scene with Moraine and Nynaeve, she never like confirms that she's that age. She just lets Moraine like think that she's that old. Mm-hmm. And so you could still be like, yeah, I can see how they're playing it. Like, oh yeah, maybe Nynaeve is this person because we never really confirm like, oh yeah, she is too old. You still have like the, she was brought to the two rivers from outside. And yeah, yeah so they totally, totally could be playing that, that up. Really all four, well, so Rand is sus because he busted through the door that he yep. shouldn't have been able to. Matt is doing weird dagger Mushadar stuff and and Tom thinks he can channel. Nynaeve just did that and then Egwene can channel because we saw the scene with her and uh, her and Moraine in the forest. The only one that doesn't seem like he could be the dragon is Perrin. Perrin has yeah. like <laughs> Perrin's got the wolf connection going on but we have no idea what that is and it's like just barely happening right now so well earlier this episode there was that conversation with Lan and Moraine about Egwene's power I'm pretty sure there was a I think it was this episode where they talk about oh, yeah like, Lance uh, Lan asks uh if if Loghain is as strong as Egwene right that's what right he, yeah and, and Moraine says she doesn't think so right so you got that's another yeah 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 like, dang, I want to see what Egwene does now right uh-huh yeah. yeah so I I like that they're doing this it, it makes it it evens things out more than the book, which is really just Rand the whole time. And there's there's no mystery there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, what else? So the warders, the Aes Sedai, we get Alana, we get some of some, well, we get her two warders introduced and Karini, Karini, which she's actually New Spring. So <laughs> you you haven't read New Spring. I have um, not. Yeah, but she's like a minor character in New Spring, but she's supposed to be like the next Amerlin, basically. Like she's really powerful. But then she dies in New okay. Spring, killed by some dark friends. So they're just like they're just bringing her in as gotcha. um, to establish this, and um, it was like that kind of cemented the warder bond there a little bit more when Stepin, I think is his name, uh, when gotcha. she dies and he goes crazy and almost kills everyone with his uh ill-fated yeah. attempt to take down Logan. yeah that was really dumb yeah don't move by him probably a bottom three character I, if you had to be honest <laughs> i'm surprised landed like chuck a sword into his back as he was running to like to stop him I don't, yeah like i don't know i feel like land could have prevented him getting into like well i mean he didn't, he didn't know what would happen necessarily right yeah that's that's true but he shouted at him, told him not to, right? Like, yeah, I guess you're right, but why would you kill him? Yeah. Yeah. So. Did you think it was too much info dump at all? Like, was it was it okay? This is something, as I was watching it, I was like, I like this because I know, but, like, do people watching, like, do they follow all of this okay? It's hard to say. The, uh, the one thing that I felt like was a little forced was, like, the different colored ajas, what they do. Um like they'd be like oh yeah the green aja the battle aja and like talk a little bit about it where like i felt a little forced just to like they're giving you the information and that that's it right yeah um i like the conversations with the warders though when nandy was talking to him that that type of stuff like i felt like was good and not forced and yeah yeah um, the water you're right when they were sitting on the fire the water conversations that felt natural because they would be explaining to nandy because nandy doesn't know yeah. but like was it Alana and Leandrin yeah. or, or Karini and Leandrin, whoever was talking? Like, why would they be explaining what their ashes do to each other? Like, right. They no, they've known for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So that totally felt forced. But so as far as like, I don't know, I think it was fine overall, though, is like, there wasn't for me, I don't know, I'm trying to think from like an outside perspective. I don't think there's too much information. Mm. Um, like I thought the reveals were good, right? The, yeah. I think, I mean, up until this episode, I feel like as a first time a watcher, not reader, you'd be you'd be suspicious of the Aes Sedai as well, right? Just because the main characters are. And so I feel like this goes a little bit of a way to like show them from a different perspective, which I think is good. And it does that well. I like that they, they've only really talked about green, blue, red so far. Yeah. They, yep. We've seen a yellow being burned. And obviously they're 
going to get to that because that's going to be important for Nynaeve. But like brown, gray, white, not even a thing at this point. Okay. Eventually they'll get there because we've seen that in the trailer. I hope they don't really, honestly, I hope they don't spend hardly any time on that because gray and white are just like boring and not important. And brown is only important because of Varen. And I don't think we get Varen until season two anyway. So Ace and I were done with them for now for this episode. Um, Tom, Matt, Rand, what do you think? I, I liked that. I don't know. I kind of liked the 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 Mashadar like coming out of Matt's mouth. That was it, it makes it seem more sinister. And I like that they yeah. were showing him using the dagger. They I think they should have done that in in, in episode three when he was getting yeah. mad at Rand. But now clearly something's wrong with him, and clearly it's connected to the dagger. It's obvious. Yeah. Well, I think that scene really does let you fully like ask or at least question like did Matt kill the family or did the fade kill the family yeah I was watching uh, we were both over at um my parents house for Thanksgiving uh but my mom was wondering because she hasn't read the books and so she was watching and she was like oh my gosh what just happened did Matt did Matt kill them did the fade kill them I think yeah like the fade was clearly the one right unless that'd be really dark it's not completely confirmed but i don't think matt did yeah i don't think so one thing though like they have yeah they have the martial art like like go back into his mouth as they like zoom into him right yeah. and so you're like oh man like but also uh, their wounds were like really yeah really yeah really large he wouldn't have been able yeah. to do that with his with his dagger his knife yeah his oh, yeah, yeah yep and like i liked how for matt's character when he ran out of the building and there was the girl right and yeah. he's like you know yeah. thinking back to his sisters and stuff right so do you remember so this was the grinwell family like th this right. is an actual this is another group from the books but, but they're like a larger family and i think one of the sisters ends up going to the white tower for a bit and gets later impersonated by lanfear there's a whole thing with with this group and now they're just like a small family that they're they're still existing, but they're dead now. So, oh. yeah. But that that's good. Like, I think that's a good example of how the show is adapting. We're taking existing things, giving a nod to the books, but we've got to move faster. The other thing in, in that storyline that was great is you got more of Tom's backstory. They're pulling that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why he's, he's doing yeah. what he's doing. Yeah, the uh, Owen backstory, that was good. But Tom, Tom is gone now. He's... They, I, this happens in uh, in Whitebridge, right? Yeah. And, yep. Yeah. It was the same, right? He took on a fade, uh -huh. and they leave. They run out they of the run city, away and, and it seems like Tom is dead. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't. Do you think we'll see him again in season one? I, I think he's <laughs> up for the season. I think he is too. I yeah. I mean, it was a long time, right? It yeah. A... It doesn't make sense that he would catch up with him again. No. Yeah, I think he's out for the season. Yeah, pretty brief. But it's a bummer. I like Tom. Yeah, memorable. I look forward to having him back in season two, hopefully. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully. That would be pretty disappointing if not. Hopefully he comes yeah. back in a dramatic way. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm imagining some kind of save, like characters are in a bad situation, and here comes Tom back again to, to save the day. Yep. Also, the little doll, the Brigitte doll, that was a yeah. fun thing. Yep. Yeah. I wish they would have said that she's a hero of the horn uh, or a hunter of the horn. Yeah. That could have been a little line that was added in there. No one, non-readers wouldn't have known what it meant, but it could establish something for some backstory. Yeah. Maybe they didn't want to be too forward about it. And just leave it there. As a, yeah. Throw, I don't I know. throw the name in for now or yeah. just, uh, there's lots of stuff like that. that I mean, if you didn't read, you don't care. If you're, if you have read, you you love it. It's a good balance. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and then, and then finally, Perrin and Egwene. Um, is there, is there anything <laughs> important to talk about with these guys right now? Um. No, 
I mean, the one thing I, yeah, I mean, Perry just continues on in his inner battle, right, right. with violence, has the conversation with the chief lady. I don't remember her name or what her, one of the grandparents. And then you have Arum's relationship with uh, Wayne. They're kind of kind of right. friends. Less, less in the show than in the book. In the book, Egwene was more head over heels for Aram than right. in the show. And she's um, still, they're still holding on. They're still giving us hope for Egwene and Rand. Yes. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll do a major, major shakeup there in the end. They're just going to yeah. eliminate all the Trikans and. Yeah. And our main character yeah, they, together. They they better still bring it on the end, otherwise I'm I'm just not gonna watch the show. He's been cast. Rape Sitch okay, was okay. cast in his AMA that he did. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hopefully that means no. cast in, in season two. Yeah. Yeah. Although well, I mean, maybe just season three. I don't know. Yeah. But other than that, I don't think anything really uh exciting happens with Perrin and Egwene. Yeah, so White Cloaks in episode five, I'm guessing. Because there's that scene in the trailer where the White Cloaks are like circling around them. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to like a more Perrin Wolf moment. Yeah. Um, I mean, Perrin's gotta do like... something. Perrin is they've made Perrin really boring. So yeah. they've gotta do something to him. In, in the book, Perrin was one of my favorites. Like his his parts with Elias again. Sorry, I know I've said this before we're, we're some of my favorites so yeah i'm really hoping they mm-hmm. maybe not as big as a naive saving the day moment with Logan, but i hope there is a big you know cool ending scene of episode five where something with the wolves comes in yeah not that they've made naive so cool i feel like they owe it to give every other character a, a hero moment time and oh, exactly yeah, thus far naive is is stealing the show I wonder if each episode will have one of them having a hero moment, right? You've had Nynaeve now. You have four episodes left. You have the the four who are potentially the dragon, uh-huh. right? Which one's uh-huh. it going to be? They need to have each a powerful, this could be me moment, maybe. Right. But I mean, <laughs> Matt's not going to do anything good for the rest of the well, season. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's probably going to be unconscious here soon, right? Or maybe not yet. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to... Like, clearly, he is already at very advanced stages of something bad happening to him. I don't know how they hold on to that for four more episodes without him totally losing it. Yep. Yeah, you also have, yeah, I mean, there's a lot still to happen. You got Pot on Fane, who's going to come back in in episode seven, maybe. Yeah, he's, hmm, I think, I think I heard somewhere he was back for at least like one more scene. It would be, hmm, I don't know how they're going to bring him in to this season. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, things are changing. Pieces are yep. being shuffled around, but I'm liking where it's going so far. This episode four was really good, so gives yeah. me uh, a lot of faith for the rest of the season. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, every, excited. Thursday, every Thursday at 5 p.m., my time. I am, <laughs> that is booked out. <laughs> the next month. Or soon will be me too cool. though <laughs> all right let us know uh, in the comments what you thought of episode four i think a lot of people are going to say they loved it and they love Nynaeve and uh hopefully the other characters get some love as well but uh let us know what you're thinking thanks for tuning in uh catch us next week for another recap thanks Hayden. yeah thank you see you later everyone bye